Hi there and welcome back to Station Road. Now there's been a bit of industry going on over the last couple of weeks and it's really down to the fact that it is damn cold here in New Zealand at the moment with winter well and truly entrenched should I say. Uh, today well it's the 21st today so it is actually the shortest day of the year here and the garage gets rather cold during the winter months so I rack my brains to figure out how can I continue doing YouTube videos without having to freeze my, well, should I say, butt off in the garage. So, I have actually set up a wee little studio here in my office, um, which uh, as I previously mentioned in some other videos where I have uh, been in here, it is well insulated, it has some heating and uh, it works out quite well. So I've actually put in a wee fold down desk here, so this should be uh, really quite good for showing off uh, techniques and how to's and things like that and then when I'm not doing uh, well station road uh, videos and things like this this whole thing folds up as you can see so um, yeah um, it's um, you know it's not overly professional or anything like that but it basically does the job um, now today's video we're actually going to look at some uh, automated signaling now as you know, um, well most of you will know my layout is set late 50s through the 1960s and partially into the 70s. Um, and we all know that um, colour light signalling was uh, well and truly established within British Railways. Um, but of course also uh, semaphore signals were still um, quite uh, prevalent as well. But um, I do have a lot of semaphore signals but, but um, I'm thinking well colour light signals are easier to actually <laughs> make them actually work um, on your layout. So um, I'm actually going to go down that route. I, I will use a couple of semaphore signals maybe in a, in a situation where it's just basically part of a line that just simply has not been upgraded in any way. Now I've watched plenty of videos and plenty of the fellow YouTubers out there uh, had some very extensive and elaborate systems and of course really at the end of the day um, probably up there would be in the probably the most suitable and also uh, what shall we say uh, prototypical or to accurate to real life would be um, ones that are all established within block detection uh, on a elaborate DCC systems in which case you end up getting sort of really true um, operation of your color light signals. Now Station Road doesn't have, um, I don't have block detection, I don't have the, the layout it, it separated into, into any blocks whatsoever and I don't really want to go there. I just, um, that might be, you know, at some point I will do, you know, start from scratch, rip it all up, start again with a new layout and I will probably go down that road and do block detection in the full automated systems um, but um, with station road you know originally being basically a DC layout that I converted to DCC um, it's just not nah, too much of a headache in my to in, in my sort of um, eyes so um, the the other option was well how, how do I get um, some form of semi-automated signaling. Now of course you could all just hook up your signals and they would be operated by um, a bunch of switches on a layout or they could be um, in tandem with your points. So when you switch a point the uh, signal would change as well at the same time because you can get those little switches that's which you can put underneath your um, Pico uh, solenoid point motors and things like that so there's there's all that kind of uh, way of going now I thought about the point motors and um, running them in conjunction with that um, but that still didn't really sort of cover the situation where once a train is occupying a section of track 
then that signal should be red. So there was some other YouTube channels that have covered a simple relay circuit using light sensors or IR sensors that poke up through the track bed. And this is actually the way I've gone because um, when I did a bit, bit of further investigation, I actually realized that these little circuits, which I was able to get here in New Zealand, and I noticed that they're all over eBay as well. And I'll pop in a link in the, in the description to these um, relay switches. Um, they're incredibly cheap. Uh, you know, I here in New Zealand, I think I paid like $14 for a relay switch which equates to around about seven pounds, seven or eight pounds. And, you know, one switch controls, well, it can actually control more than one light um, because um, there is, I haven't really sort of investigated it a huge deal, but there is ways that you could actually hook up more signals to one relay, um, but they operate through different phases. But um, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to do the basic uh, sort of demonstration. I've um, done a wee experiment where we've got, one signal and one relay just to see how it all works. So yeah, the relay switch is an unbelievably um, affordable, which to me in my eyes is to think, well, you know, you go into block detection, you've got to get all the um, the block detection modules and all this kind of thing, you end up spending hundreds of dollars when I can go this way and it's, um, you know, just so much cheaper. So, um, well, sh I'll just show you, these are, the, these are the signals that I'm using. Now, for the purposes of this, and it's something it, and I will actually, well, let's say this is a disclaimer because these are two aspect signals. Now, I'm pretty sure I could work out a way you can operate a three aspect or possibly even a four aspect signal using um, these uh, relay switches. And, and they would be in series to, depending on what part of the track you're on. But yeah, it, it's something that I would actually need to sort of plan out on a piece of paper to see how, how it would actually work. Um, and it would might involve multiple um, sensors and multiple relays. But for this video here, we're just going to stick with the, the very simple and basic because it, you know, it took me a little bit to get my head around it. I'm not hugely au fait with, with electronics and, um, and that side of things. So really it was a case of just looking at it from the simple point of view. Now, um, these signals, and I'll just get one out of here. Now, I mean, various companies make all, all you know, different signals. But here in New Zealand, it's actually a real struggle to actually find um, suppliers. And um, I know that the signals that, that are available that you can get over in the UK are actually, they're more realistic, well, they're more prototypical. Now, I'll zoom in and we'll show you a shot of one of these. And um, it, it's, it's reasonably detailed. And for the purposes of Station Road, I think they'll work out just fine. Um, there's two different versions, and we'll just show you that. Um, I thought I was buying them from the same, same supplier, but it turned out I don't think I was actually, so we sort of ended up with two different versions. Now, one actually, they're, they're, they're a similar height, um, but one has much larger LEDs, which is not overly accurate. Um, the uh, the smaller LEDs I, I definitely prefer. And of course as well, and um, this is something that um, maybe people in the UK can actually help me out with. Now, these signals are all painted black, but as far as I can tell in the UK, the, the actual pole and the ladder and so forth is, is a sort of a greyish colour. Now, whether this was the case back in the 1960s, I don't actually know. I've tried to find fo colour photos from the 60s and I really can't seem to find anything. So if somebody could let me know, that would be great. Is the pole and the ladder and so forth painted grey in the 1960s? Now, so that's the um, the signals and um, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a common, common wire, uh, the black and then you have uh, the green and the red, obviously. Now, the, the, uh, they are LEDs, and of course they come with a resistor as well, uh, so that needs to be attached to the common wire, so you know you don't uh, end up popping your LEDs. So they're the uh, signals that I've purchased, and they, these, um, you know, this is available um, for an auction website here in New Zealand, not sure who makes them, there's no brand name on it, but they're pretty um, inexpensive, you know, they, they weren't actually too, too costly, which is great. Now, here is the circuit, 
and as I mentioned there's a link in the description uh, this version here is a light sensor version so um, it's got a wee light sensor and I'll just bring in a closer shot of that now what we've actually got here is you've got um, over on the left hand side is the DC in to power the actual circuit so the power for the circuit is separate to the power that's used for the actual signals themselves uh, we then have um, the uh, the light sensor plugged in now um, there is a version I'll just pop this up on the screen now which is the I, IR version um, which is better um, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail shortly um, down the bottom uh, there's two blue boxes one controls the sensitivity of the uh, the light sensor and the other one controls the timing so um, the great thing is with these sensors is you can, can delay the default setting for this relay so when a train passes over the light sensor and and the light goes to red um, once that train has cleared that light sensor you can delay the amount of time it takes before the signal turns back to green then at the right hand end we have three terminals and the middle one is the common and the green wire from the signal goes into that top terminal um, the black goes into the center terminal and the red goes into the lower terminal now but what you've got to do in the in series is also hook in the signal's own power supply um, in this case I just used like a 9 volt battery just for the purposes of this but um, I do have a 9 volt transformer DC transformer to um, to actually um, operate the the color light signals so that's the um, the circuit and this you know cost me all of $14 so I'll just bring over the experiment which I've set up now I often actually will set up a sort of like a mini experiment beforehand rather than going jumping straight into doing something on the layout it's easier to test it to see how it works um, you know you can adjust obviously the sensitivity of the light sensor depending on um, you know lighting whether it's indoor lighting or daylight and things like that so um, yeah so you can do all of that kind of stuff beforehand until you think you've got it right and then of course it's all ready to go and prepared in terms of um, uh, setting it up on the actual layout which I won't be doing for a wee while yet so um, you know I've got all the um, all the materials here and stuff and it's all ready to go for when it does come time for me to actually start setting up the signals but um, the reason I'm not sort of actually doing anything on the actual layout itself is um, because we do have this extension planned and that is going to seriously alter some of the existing track and um, and so there's really little point in <laughs> setting up signals if in a couple of months time it's all going to get pulled up again so anyway um, we'll just pause it here and I'll go and get the, um, the wee test example here and set that up right so i've now just set this up so we can demonstrate it and for those who were on facebook may have seen a short little clip there as well so um we'll i'll show you what's happening underneath this um piece of board and so forth in a few minutes but i'll just demonstrate uh the light changing with this wagon now i've just got it on a wee bit of a downhill slope it's all totally professional we have a drawing pin at the other end to stop it from rolling off and it is a piece of old track that I've pulled up at some point and it's got bits of ballast and stuff stuck all over it. So uh, if I just let this go and there we have it and we wait for a little bit and there we go it changes back to green so that is essentially how the light works and I think it's a really good solution now I, this has been done before that there's um, plenty of people have demonstrated this working and um, so it's, it's nothing new so anyway if we sort of take a closer look at it there is a wee light sensor um, that I've just got situated between the sleepers now um, 
I think this would actually be quite nicely disguised once once you've ballasted and so forth. Now, one other aspect that I wanted to mention, which uh, I brought up earlier, was uh, the two different versions. Now, there's the light sensor and then there's the infrared sensor. And as we've got the light sensor here in the track, uh, the difference between the two is the light sensor obviously is light dependent. So uh, if you're going to be running a lot of nighttime uh, operations with your layout, um, the light sensors aren't really going to work very well unless your track happens to be near actual model railway lighting. Whereas the infrared sensor um, is not uh, actually light dependent, so it can actually uh, operate during a nighttime running session and also during the daytime. So there's essentially uh, the difference between the two. And this is what we've got just simply set up underneath. So we have our light sensor going in through the baseboard. This is our circuit. And as you'll see, the circuit itself has its own LEDs on it, um, indicating what state that it's actually in. So here's our power source uh, coming in which is a 12 volt DC power supply. Now I've, um, I often, what I do is when some electrical item or household item goes defunct, um, I keep the power packs because you never know when they might actually come in handy. So this um, will just shoot over and have a look at the actual power pack. So this is the power pack that's supplying that circuit. It's actually a Netgear um, power adapter and I think it might have been for a, an Ethernet hub or possibly a wireless modem um, that died and I've kept the um, power adapter because it is a 12 volt DC power supply. Now the interesting thing is you know I, I actually test this with the multimeter and it's actually not 12 volts it's, it's actually higher than that. Um, it's not terribly well regulated but it does the job. So um, in terms of the other uh, end of the circuit, um, as I mentioned, uh, we have a 9-volt battery operating the actual signals. Now, I, when, the, when my signals are actually all in place on the layout, this will be replaced by another power adapter which I have, which is a 9-volt DC power adapter. Now, our, just up there is where the signal light is. Um, I've just chucked in the terminal block just to make it easier to hook up the wires but essentially here we have the power is connecting through into the uh, common terminal on here and then we have the, the red and the uh, green signal lights and then the common from the signal is going to the terminal block then running into the positive and then out of the battery. So this signal here has a built-in resistor that's actually in, in the, inside the hole there, um, so hence why you can't see the resistor. So with the, um, the LED indicators on the, the actual uh, circuit board, um, these are purely just for to show the um, status that's on the board, but uh, if I pass my hand over the light sensor, it should indicate it is now active. So the red obviously is just indicating that this power is on to the uh, circuit board and the green indicates the uh, change in status. So that's how that all works. And there you go. Here's our red signal saying that the track is now occupied. And, uh, and then you can set the, the amount of delay so uh, this one here is for the time and there's a little jumper next to it you can just see in there now if you um, disconnect that jumper that changes the, the the time scale so with the jumper connected you can delay it from 1 to 20 seconds and I think if you take that jumper off you can delay it up to 200 seconds um, before it, the uh, light turns back to green so there we have it um it, it's you know it, it's pretty straightforward and to think really by the end of the day you might have spent 30 dollars um on a signal which in, in my eyes is um you know pretty 
inexpensive. So that's the signalling system that I'm going to use on Station Road. And, you know, I think it'll work quite well uh, considering I'm not going to go down the route of block detection and, um, well, very elaborate automated systems. Um, I'd also like to uh, mention is I've just recently uh, passed over the 2,000 subscribers and um, I just, um, I'm actually sort of blown away really. Um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic to, um, to see, you know, the level of people who are sort of um, interested in what I'm doing and, um, well, hopefully um, benefiting and getting some form of uh, inspiration, ideas and so forth um, out of what I present on the Station Road channel. So to all of you who have uh, subscribed, just a big massive thank you. And I did do a wee competition when I reached a thousand subscribers. So I think, well, I will do another competition, but I still haven't really sort of nutted out what exactly I'm going to do yet. But um, watch this space, um, there will be something coming up in the not too distant future um, with some more goodies. Um, but uh, we may move away from the stray dogs and the rogue cat. So I'll leave it there for now and uh, certainly hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe for, for those who haven't and also click that little bell icon too because that will give you automatic notifications of when my next video goes up. Also, yeah, don't forget to uh, like this video and um, I will see you next time and there will be more videos coming from my uh, makeshift winter studio and I think I'll um, get it a little bit more set up next time so um, I can actually use these shelves to uh, display some of my rolling stock and I might even actually set up uh, possibly along here a little bit of track that we can actually test some locomotives and have some sort of miniature little running uh, sessions. <laughs> so there we have it for today's video and to automated signaling. Bye for now. <laughs>